last video in the boatyard, we sealed the keel. Before we got to the boatyard, we were really asking ourselves over and over again, what exactly was this going to cost? We were trying to save money, we were trying to make a budget, and determine how to get this roof over our heads to be more safe, to be mobile, and to maybe even sail the world someday. So I think it might be fair to say that we might represent the lowest budget 40-foot sailing YouTube channel out there right now. Well, technically, maybe the budget could actually actually be lower, I think that at that point you're skimping out on safety and sturdiness of your sailboat. For example, we could have ignored a lot of the more expensive problems, but you shouldn't do that on a boat. You just never know when you might have a rough passage or just a stormy night and you might have a material failure. It's better to tackle those preventable big problems beforehand if, if you can. It's not about things looking pretty, it's about the practical aspects of keeping the boat afloat. So far with this haul out, we've filled in about 10 unnecessary holes in the hull under the waterline. More than half of those had crumbling seacocks. We replaced just two of the through hulls that we're going to continue using. We addressed all of the osmosis. The hull is as healthy as it can be right now without having just sandblasted the whole layer off. The cutlass bearing was replaced, the shaft was straightened in three ways, the rudder post has been somewhat dealt with so that we don't lose steering in the future, although that's not a finished job so I'll come back to that. And one thing to understand with our boat budget is that we started at zero. This was essentially a free 40-foot boat. We paid mortgage for it for the last couple of years, we've done a couple of projects over the years, fixing up the galley a bit, making new water tanks because we had leaky water tanks. The rigging that we finished putting on in 2020 was about a $5,000 job. This is all in USD, I guess. To be clear, we don't have rental properties in the background. We don't own stocks or bonds. We just have our labor and our tools and the people who want to see these projects happen. Everything that we used for working on the boat came from the support of our viewers, came from you guys. Breaking down the cost of the haulout, you can see right away that the biggest chunk was the boatyard itself. That cost included 125 days on the hard, in and out of the water, and also they wanted over 200 bucks just to move the stands. The second biggest chunk was the paint, epoxy, and all the imported stuff. Don't expect to find marine grade paints, epoxies, and bronze through hulls around here unless you're willing to wait and or pay way more. And the longer you wait, the more boatyard days you'll be paying, of course. We installed the through hulls at the last moment before doing our final hull painting. Okay, now we're recording. <laughs> Yes, to put in the hole. <laughs> okay, I'm starting to screw on. We actually backed the nut off a little bit here and added some more 5200 sealant. <laughs> in both cases, we simply had to use a large enough wrench to stick into the through hull from the outside to stop it from spinning when tightening the nut from the inside, because good luck finding a through hull step wrench just laying around these parts. Alright, it's just a wedge to make sure the depth sounder stays flat on the hull. It's a very expensive overkill wedge. We've been carrying around a bit of G10 material for a couple of years and use little pieces of it constantly for various projects. I don't think G10 is overkill at all, considering that the original wooden version was totally eaten away by Teredo worm. We epoxied the wedge directly onto the hull, and then later we 5200 the transducer onto the wedge. I did an absolute speedrun sanding of the hull above the waterline, filling in nicks and scratches, and painting it all white. So, just kidding from earlier on, we do care about making our boat look pretty, sometimes. How does it feel to have a painted boat? Nice, really nice. Even though it was not one of the jobs we were going to do. We 
painted on some leftover two-part paint with rollers to simplify the process. So next time we need to paint anything, we just roll on some more. The rudder came back from the metal shop. They had finally made the cut and the holes that we needed to eventually bolt on the tiller securely. The through hulls and valves were all on, the engine shaft seals secured and ready for aligning. It was just a matter now of applying the anti-fouling. We used the local Sherwin-Williams paint shop's lowest cost hard anti-fouling. After this point, we wouldn't want the boat to remain out of the water for more than a week before the antifoul would begin to degrade. We still need to deal with the actual alignment of the engine, although being out of the water made it possible to align it, so that's good. Is everything done on the boat? No. Are we going back in the water? Yes. Very soon. Our friends, who kind of recently bought their own sailboat in the U.S., came to visit us in the boatyard. Their timing was simply perfect to bring us some much-needed parts, and they shared with us some drinks at our favorite hangout spot. They bring us two L sections of aluminum that we glued together, epoxy together, and we're going to bolt together to make a T section. An old T bar that has a crack in it. This was the best we could do for fitting the exact dimensions that we needed without having to weld the cracked aluminum T-bar. It's always better to create something stronger than what broke in the first place, after all. And now we were going to complete the mass step by adding some G10 to the bottom of it. I did some cleaning, epoxying, and fairing before Robbie drilled the holes to bolt it onto the deck. We'd really exhausted ourselves and all of our resources at this point, but we still had to prepare the mast to become part of the boat again. Today we have to get the mast step ready, as well as all the fittings back on the mast. I also have to fit uh, one layer of paint somewhere in there. Uh, we're going to paint and put everything on the mast. That's what we're going to have to do. A lot of last minute little detailed stuff like Tef gelling the turnbuckles. And we could also not forget to bolt something onto the rudder shaft. We were still waiting for the metal shop to make us the tiller attachment. This was a very, very temporary wood tiller that would just have to do for now. I sanded with 100 grit paper, trying only to remove the paint on the mast that was crumbling off. Painting a mast requires special care, and in this case we only had OSPO to prep the surface, so I sprayed that on and washed it off. This etches the aluminum surface somewhat. To do this process properly, we would also then need to coat the surface with a substance like alodyne, but we were out of time and money. We used what we had, which was the remaining epoxy primer, which claims to be good for metals. This would be a test. wires together with some tape and some rope. The old wires in the mast, the new wires ready to go in. Tough gel it and we got new fasteners. Look at them brand new. So you tough gelled them and you started just screwing on parts of the mast. While I was painting, sanding, and painting some more, Robbie was returning all the components to the mast that he had taken off. And I wet sanded and I wet sanded, only wishing that we had more time to make it all smooth. But with the crane arriving tomorrow morning, or so we thought, 
I stopped sanding and then applied the final tiny amount of two-part white paint to cover the layer of primer. It was barely enough, but now the mast step was bolted on and the mast was ready to go back up. starting to be evening, sun is starting to set. We've been waiting all day for the crane to show up and we've just been calling them and texting them and back and forth. They're supposed to be here now and they're not here yet. Um... Of course, the crane only finally showed up as the sun was setting so that we would possibly have to work in the dark. We helped our fellow sailors in the yard to put up their mast first. It was a little tricky to precisely get the keel-stepped mast into the hole and down onto the right exact spot, but after a couple tries, they hit their target. Our boat now. The crane barely was able to get the mast high enough to reach up onto our deck, but luckily, being deck-stepped, we wouldn't need to bring the mast any higher than you see here. and she was on. Now we needed to spend 20 minutes or so attaching all the stays, by which time it was fully dark. Despite the mask looking a little crooked when we woke up the next day, mission accomplished. And the next day was even more fun-filled. We would finally be splashing after a total of four months of working non-stop on the bottom of our boat. There was just one last job to do, to paint the small areas where the stands were. We sanded and then slapped on as much anti-fouling as the areas would take. And without waiting very long at all, she was galloping off triumphantly towards the water. I'm looking at the rudder shaft. They're so nice and smooth, it's like if you open these, water will come gushing in. Shot, huh? 